At times like this, I wish I taught guitar or something cool and not SN2 mechanisms. So don't forget, SN1 is a two-step process with tertiary halo alkanes and bang means it's fast. And so from that, you should be able to work out that SN2, well, that's a one-step process with primary halo alkanes and that one's the slow one. So we're having to look at SN2 today. So a primary halo alkane, let's try bromoethane, and it isn't with the hydroxide iron. Nope, not today, we're looking at ammonia. And so that gives a reaction intermediate. Oh, this board is driving me crazy today. This reaction intermediate here. And then that moves on to give me ethylamine and hydrogen bromide. So that's a one-step process. That's the reaction intermediate there. Doesn't look like two steps. Don't say it's two steps, it's one step. It makes it easier to remember. And so the lone pair on the ammonia is going to go to that carbon and the bromine's going to become bromide. It loves electrons. It's going to draw that those two electrons from the bonds over. It's electrophilic. It's driving me mad. Not far to drive. Anyway, so bromine's close to fluorine on the periodic table, and so they're both electrophilic. All right, let's look at cyanide. Ions on halo alkanes. Well, once again, it's a substitution, one step. Cyanide's going to go on there, bromine comes off. Don't forget the reaction intermediate. I put it in square brackets with a negative sign, otherwise it'll be wrong. And so you're asking, well, why would I ever want to play with cyanide ions and halo alkanes? Well, the reason is, is because you can extend the carbon chain. Notice that we go from two carbons to three carbons. You can say, why would I ever want to extend the carbon chain? That's your business. 